In this lesson, I want to talk about service lifecycle in Azure. A key point about the cloud is this constant innovation, this pace of change. You'll hear terms like evergreen, because there's always these new capabilities and features being added. There are new services being created. There are new features to existing services constantly being added. Now, these new capabilities often don't just appear. Just like anything else, they have to be tested. If you think about DevOps, there's feedback cycles. And so as you have these new capabilities, there's obviously internal sets of testing going on within Teams at Microsoft. And then for some of the time, they want to make it available, but they want to make it available to a subset of chosen customers. So what then you might see is this idea of a preview, but it's private. So here, this is a limited set of customers. These might be chosen. It might be you can apply to be part of it. But you're going to have a private preview. Next, there's often the idea of a public preview. So in a public preview, as the name suggests, pretty much anyone can go and participate. So this is open. Now maybe you still have to opt in. There might be you need to go into your subscription and say, hey, I want to enable this particular feature. If you hop over to the portal, if I was to go and look at my subscription, one of the things we have in our subscriptions is this idea of previews. So right now you can see here, preview features. So I could go to my preview features, and at this point I could go in, I'll see all the different uh, preview features that are available, and I might say, oh, I wanna use this one. So I could select it, and then I would go ahead and hit register. And there may be a certain portion of time. Now, there are some types of preview where there's maybe commands I have to run and the documentation will walk through these. Additionally, if they are in preview, there's actually a preview version of the portal. So I'm right now in the regular portal, but if I hop over to this other tab, if you look at the URL, you'll notice it's preview.portal.azure.com. So the emphasis here is this addition of the preview word and in the title, we see it saying preview as well. So some types of preview may require us to use this preview portal to light up the various pieces of functionality. Sometimes they'll even give you a specific URL because it's a special version of the portal that has a certain flag that lights up that feature in the portal. Sometimes when things are in preview, it may not be in the portal. I use the AZ CLI or PowerShell to utilize that. And then once it's gone through all of these phases, well then it becomes generally available. I.e. it is GA. So now it's a public feature. And at this point, this is where things like SLA will be available. This is where things like support will be available. While they're in preview, sometimes they're free, sometimes they're reduced cost. There's typically not an SLA. If the service is free, there's never an SLA. There can't be a financially backed guarantee if you're not paying for it. But often support is not available. Now, sometimes when I'm in public preview or even private, if it's a specific feature that might start to work with a customer, there may be an agreement around adding support for that. So that can vary. But typically the way this is gonna work is until it hits generally available, IGA, there is no SLA and there's not typical production level support for that. So that's the, the key point about that. Now, if that's the flow, so as features are added, it's, that's the path. Now the other reason for this, it's not just testing, a big part of this is all about feedback. So a key thing that happens is the reason Microsoft do these previews is not just to test does it work, it's 
Is this the functionality the customer wants? Is it behaving in the way the customer wants? So sometimes with that feedback, it may go back and there'll be different versions of that. And if you look at the portal, even in the regular portal, so if I go not to the preview version, if you look at the top, there's this feedback icon. And that enables you to give feedback to Microsoft. So you can give it, are you satisfied? Are you unhappy? Tell me about it. And you can even say, hey, Microsoft can email me and you can submit the feedback. So this is how I can drive feedback no matter where I am in the portal about what I'm seeing. But again, this is not aimed at something that's broken. You should raise a support ticket for that. This is about, hey, feedback as to what is the actual experience. Now, how do you know? How do you know if there is some new feature? And a great way to find out is Microsoft has a blog where they talk about these are all the new updates to Azure. If we jump over, we can see there's the Azure updates page. So what we're looking at here is azure.microsoft.com slash updates. And they basically put a note of all the features that they add over various pieces of time. Now, things like Azure AD updates are not added here. They're in a separate location. And what I actually do is on my YouTube channel, so this might be useful, is every week on Sunday, I publish an Azure update. So you can actually scroll down and there's my Azure infrastructure update. So every single week, I go through what all of the last changes are, explaining what they are, how they work, why you want to use it. So that can be a really good way to stay up to date. And as I talked about before, I post a lot of videos on my channel. Um, normally three videos a week. I do deep dives, other things, but that's another great way you can stay up to date on what's happening in Azure.